Today on QDL, increased manufacturing complexity has been driving the need for robust and accurate inspection fixtures. So today we're going to talk to uh, Victor Rinaldi at Philips Precision about the rise in custom fixturing and why companies are turning to third parties like Philips to design complex fixturing solutions and what's involved with that. Well, to find out, join us in 30 seconds. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. In today's tech corner, of a different tech corner, uh, we're going to be talking uh, with the folks from Phillips Precision in Boylston, Massachusetts. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to that interview in just a little bit. But first of all, I want to set this up. Um, if you remember, we looked at Phillips Precision Inspection Arsenal product uh, a few months ago. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, we did a demo. Uh, Inspection Arsenal is a really versatile set of off-the-shelf fixturing tools. Uh, they, uh, 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 they are a quick swap modular fixtures that help uh, help you improve inspection and laser marking speed. Uh, really a, a great set of tools and we've uh, included a link to that demo in the player page down below uh, the player there so you can watch that entire demo. Well Philips likes to think of itself um, as a manufacturing laboratory. They have worked with companies across the country to de develop and manufacture a wide range of both standard and custom fixtures. So like, for instance, uh, many of you, this product has been around for a long time, many of you are probably familiar with their Pitbull clamp. Uh, this is the lowest profile highest rip out resistance clamp on the market and uh, according to Philips uh, Precision it is one of Titan Gilroy's favorites. Titan Gilroy, that's a that's a client of theirs and they wanted to give a shout out to Titan. You may know them as the Titans of CNC. Uh, recent products also include their M5 edge finder. Um, with this uh, operators can find the edge of a part in a CNC prior to cutting with the doors wide open and the spindle off. Uh, it works on any material this is a, a much easier method of edge finding than having to look through a closed CNC door, uh, jogging to the cutting edge, uh, jog, jogging the cutting tool to the edge, uh, uncertain of whether you're exactly on the edge of it or, or not. So you, you, you've done this, you know the problem, and of course you can't bypass the, the door safety locks in order to do it uh, easier. So this, the, the, the M5 edge finder actually just allows you to do this much, much easier and much quicker. So, these are all Philips Precision off-the-shelf standard fixtures, but today we're going to focus on custom fixture design. Over the last few years, there has been an increase in the demand for inspection that falls is now falling on manufacturers and as a result the the demand for fixturing whether it's standard components or custom fixturing has also increased. Uh, you know, if you think about it, production advancements historically focus on the shop floor, pushing faster and higher volume production, uh, more accurate equipment, and along with sophisticated work holding solutions. On the other hand, quality inspection fixturing has not benefited from an equal level of attention. There is a void in the industry for fixture designs for complex parts with highly toleranced features that may also be going into high production. So inspection fixtures are now often farmed out. Not many companies employ engineering and design staff who are skilled at this sort of fixture design. For sure, uh, at these companies, you know, engineers uh, you know, can design their own parts. They're obviously experts at that. And they may even have full manufacturing capabilities. However, inspection fixture design is often left to a third party supplier like Philips because it is a sophisticated, uh, I'm sorry, not sophisticated, well, sophisticated and specialized design process. In other words, if you need inspection fixtures, why not go to experts in the field rather than mess around with it yourself? So we have one of the engineers from Philips Precision here today to discuss fixture design considerations. Uh, with us today via Zoom is Victor Rinaldi, product design engineer with Philips Precision. Hi Victor. 
Hello, Derek. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Um, so walk us through what is involved in custom a custom fixture process. I mean, do, do customers know ahead of time that they need a custom fixture, or do they just come to you and say, we need a fixture that does this, and, and maybe it might be an off-the-shelf solution, maybe it might be custom? Kind of step us through what happens here. Well, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you can see, and you now people do realize that uh, many companies don't have a specialized engineering department just to design the fixtures. And that's where exactly where we come in. Uh, usually what happened is uh, the customers uh, send us uh, the data, usually CAD files and uh, drawings. And uh, once we receive the drawings and the CAD files, we uh, review the drawings, we review the CAD files and make a suggestion to the customer what the type of fixtures then they will need. Obviously this, Usually the customer also has some requirements, uh, perhaps uh, uh, holding the part vertically, holding the part horizontally, uh, the type of machine that they're using, is it a CMM, is it a vision, is it a combination of, of uh, tactile and vision? And once we gather all these requirements, uh, we put together uh, some thoughts and uh, create a basic concept, and we share the concept with the uh, customer and we have a design review. At this point, they can visualize what we believe is the most effective and efficient way of creating a fixture uh, for this particular parts or family of parts, or in many cases also for companies that uh, do uh, inspection of uh, dozens of parts uh, on the same mold. Uh, therefore, we can create these complicated fixture or comp with complex geometry, varying complex geometry, and provide the customer with a concept. At that point, we get together and uh, we have a design review. The customer is finally able to visualize what we're talking about. Once we have an approval from the customer, then drawings are generated, uh, then, the, it, then the job is routed through the shop and the fixture is manufactured. And that's overall is basically uh, uh, the basic of uh, uh, custom fixture design. Okay, so it, it could be a combination of it, it could be a combination of both off your off the shelf fixturing combined with some sort of custom uh, some sort of custom design as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we always try to use the off the shelf component because that is an automatic savings to the customer. Uh, the components are already made, so we'll take the components out and perhaps we built from their uh, modules to hold the components on our uh, lock and load plates uh, and that will results uh, result automatically in a major savings to the customer okay um, so can you give us an example I, I, I believe you you have a you can do a screen share with us here to do a uh, an example of, of a custom fixture is that right sure I can give you a quick example of uh, something that is simple and then something that is a bit more complicated Okay, sure, why don't you show us there? Sure. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, as you can see in the screen right now, we have a simple part needed to, uh, uh, to create a fixture. Originally, uh, the fixture was, uh, uh, the original fixture that they had was a two up, and the customer had a 24 uh, shot mold. So the customer provided the data and uh, the print and from there we basically began to create parts uh what we call uh the base in this case is a polycarbonate base if you can see is uh, one of our off-the-shelf components uh and it's already all pre-built so the only thing we needed to do is basically uh put the holes for the modules and laser mark it then we created a uh, the base module as you can see from this blue part, this is a simple base module where the part will sit and will be only sitting in three points, three small points on the, on the base. Uh, after that, we've uh, designed a, what they call a retainer uh, using the back of the part as a clocking device. 
And also I created a, a simple button that it's uh, spring loaded and operated for this particular fixture. When the entire mod module is put together, uh, you can see then you have the cap and the base and the spring loaded, uh, spring loaded retainer that can open and close just by pushing on the green button here. And we've used this particular geometry and we created the retainer to fit exactly inside in that geometry. So when the operator puts the part into the, let's call it the wishbone style base, rotates it, it clicks right on the same location all the time. Uh -huh. Therefore, when the customer uh, comes, when the, the customer programs the probe to come in front of the uh, of the part to inspect all the internal features. The part is exactly in the same location all the time. Finally, uh, this customer needed to have uh, two fixtures of 24 up, and uh, these modules were mounted on uh, on the original uh, polycarbonate base. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, we have a base of, uh, of an only spec 543. Uh, and one of our, uh, the yellow part is one of our rail. And the fixture that we created, there were two, in fact, this is, you can see this is called fixture number one. Uh, basically the customer was able to uh, introduce one fixture in the machine against our rail, uh, press the button, have the machine go and do its job and inspect all the 24 parts while an operator had another exactly uh, a copy of that fixture for the second uh, 24 part of the mold shot. And uh, when the equipment finishes inspecting one fixture, it's very simply to just grab this fixture and pull it out and put the next fixture right inside in the rail. Uh, the fixtures, they do lock in magnetically, uh, and that is driven, driven by, the location is driven by the geometry, as you can see here, and the fixture do repeat within a few thousands. So uh, you have repeatability and reproducibility of the same process over and again. That's interesting. So, I mean, what was, what was this customer doing before this, and I, I guess what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to is what kind of, I don't know, time savings or, or financial savings did they achieve by uh, going with, a, with a, custom, uh, a custom fixture like this? Well, that is exactly the point. The time saving, which uh, equates in money, obviously saved, uh, is, is big, is a huge deal for all companies today. Uh, originally, this customer, when the mold was first uh, created, they were just checking two parts uh, right on the face, right on the glass of the uh, only spec 543, and they were using putty to hold the parts in place. They couldn't get, they obviously didn't get uh, repeatability, nor they could reproduce the same setup all the time. After that, uh, someone had created like a simple uh, base uh, that was basically a, a milled soft jaws to hold two parts. And uh, uh, I don't recall exactly, but I think that the inspection for all the parts, for the two parts, was over five minutes to do all the, uh, uh, all the dimension. The ROI uh, on this type of design was going to be very short. In fact, most customers, if not all customers, ROI, it's, it's quite short just within a few times using the fixture, they've paid up, they paid for that fixture. Uh, in this case, uh, the customer was uh, approximately two and a half minutes per part. Uh, and then they had approximately five minutes of loading, reloading, ensuring that the parts were in the same location. In this case, uh, the five minutes was, the five minutes of inspection were reduced to four, four minutes approximately but the loading and unloading is not happening while the machine is running. The loading and unloading of the parts within the fixture is happening outside the uh, inspection equipment while the inspection equipment is already inspecting all those fixtures. So 
if you multiply the five minutes loading and unloading time 48 time the rate of the shop you can see right then and there that the savings on that run alone if you have let's say a run of 10,000 pieces pays for this fixture over and again right Right now, I believe uh, uh, I, I believe you have another example. Uh, another example as well. Is that right? Yes, uh, uh, we created another. Here's another simple example. The customer uh, send us a uh, basically a, a, a plastic part, and this plastic part is a, a composed part. We have a uh, stiff, uh, about 1.15 millimeter thick uh, plastic, uh, hard plastic. And then a very soft uh, plastic and it's molded within this part. The customer, in this case, needed to inspect uh, the entire, all the diameters and the thickness of the part. And the only uh, inspector, uh, the, the only machine available was a vision system that had a camera installed in the Z axis. So, what we, what I did with this, what, after meeting with, uh, you know, with, with the people in here at uh, a Phyllis Precision, we basically created a simple base to where we could interlock some blocks that would have a first surface mirror. So this is the base. And above the base, uh, we created a very thin plate to hold the parts into holding place the mirrors, obviously, with the block. And these are the um, blocks for the mirrors. And then we have the block uh, for the end of the line of uh, the last row of parts. When I uh, uh, bring you to the full assembly, you can see here that basically the base is what's, what's gonna be holding the blocks with the mirrors and the purple part, which is the plate, is going to be holding the parts then they're going to be slit right inside this small uh groove okay. if you will so the, the mirror the, the mirror is just the mirror is is a way for the inspection equipment to see the the side of the part is in my is that what's going on that is correct so okay. in this case the machine had a camera on the z-axis so it was vertical it was above and um, basically the machine comes down uh, looks in the mirror and the, and the part is reflected in the mirror. I'm huh. going to show you now the assembly with the parts in it. As you can see, the parts are right inside the assembly. Oh, uh, I see so what's going on. Okay. If we, if we look at the part above, imagine that you are the camera and want to measure all of these diameter. But the camera actually looks into this mirror, which is set up at 45 degrees, reflects the image sideways against... Uh, against this block, and th this block that I just highlighted is actually painted a flat white so there is no distortion and the camera can perfectly pick up the side of, uh, of all the uh, feature on this part. Okay. So the camera basically comes up, goes from part to part and measures all the diameter. Not only the part, the camera can measure the diameters, but it can measure the width of the part because as you can see, I left uh, opening so that the camera could uh, visualize and pick up straight down the edges of the part, both in the width and on the height. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, if, if you can, uh, if you can switch back to your your, your webcam here a, a little bit, I got a, I got a couple follow up questions on this. And I guess the 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 first one that comes to mind is as you're designing. When you design these custom fixtures, uh, like like the first one had that little spring clamp that that then meets directly in with the, the the embossing on the cap, and then you've got kind of your mirror fixture right there. Do those designs ever make it into off the shelf products? In other words, you think, hey, this was kind of a cool thing. Maybe other people can use it. And now that becomes an off the shelf product. Absolutely, absolutely. We've uh, when we uh, come up with this uh, uh, these different ideas. Uh, to ensure that we can provide our customer with uh, the, the fixture that they're looking for. There's many times that we look at it and they go, wow, this was pretty cool. Perhaps we can create uh, a, like, for instance, uh, recently we came up with a new product and we call it the skinny vice. 
and basically is a very thin vice, approximately three eighths of an inch wide and about four inches tall and it's spring loaded where a customer can hold any number of components than they want on this specific vice. And this idea was actually born from another customer than we designed for uh, another fiction than we designed for another customer. Okay, interesting. Um, so, you know, in the introduction, I mentioned that even though manufacturers of complex parts, like the, the parts that you showed us, even though they may have the, the design skills, uh, mechanical design skills on hand to design their own parts, um, they have the manufacturing facilities, of course. I mean, it's not like they would be incapable of designing fixtures, but it's from what I understand from conversations with, with you guys and, and, and others is that it's kind of a different skill set, a different way of thinking maybe designing fixtures and, and how to properly hold parts than it is maybe for designing the part that your company manufactures. Is, is, that, is that kind of the case? Yes, you, you, you are correct. Uh, in fact, uh, when you design just a component, let's say a component for uh, a jet engine, there are specific uh, geometric tolerances, specific uh, design uh, protocols that you need to follow. You need to fit this part to many, many other parts. When you design a fixture, you're actually uh, designing a fixture, uh, a component around the part that another engineer has designed. And the consideration there is that you need to use all the GDNT, uh, the maximum material condition and, and least material condition of what the print actually provides you for that particular part and create a fixture to where all parts can fit. Because when that specific component goes into production, uh, you're gonna have some variation. You're gonna have some high and some lows based on the diameter. Like going back to the cap that I was showing you before. Let's say that the diameter was two inches and it's a plus or minus 5,000. So the section to where I'm holding the plastic cap, uh, the part can be anywhere from one inch 995 to two inches and five. So when we manufacture that, we need to consider that, that tolerance and build a part that actually can hold a two inches and 6,000 plus or minus one, giving the customer the ability to be able to inspect all the components that uh, come out of their manufacturing floor. The other thing is that uh, you've nailed it right on, right perfectly. Uh, many companies don't have a s special department to where they have uh, uh, an engineer that actually sits there and design pictures to inspect parts. Uh, and, and that's, like I said, that's where we come in. We, uh, we are in the field and we have the experience uh, and we're able to provide this experience to all engineering department out there. And, and are you seeing growth in, in the custom fixturing business? There's this, there's there seem to be more of a need for custom fixtures now uh, as opposed to 10 years ago, let's say? Yes, absolutely. There is, the, the, the need is definitely, the trend is definitely up. Uh, the trend is, uh, is growing and is going up. Uh, in, in recent years, uh, there's been more of a focus on the inspection department. Uh, so far in the last 20 years, there's been a lot of focus on the, on the manufacturing department to where we have to get better equipment, uh, go faster, cut faster. Uh, but then the, the bottleneck becomes what, what are we doing on the inspection department? And that's where we've seen the growth. Uh, people need and require uh, fixturing to make their job quicker and easier and to, and to reliably uh, uh, reproduce the same setup all the time. And our lock and load system, that's exactly what, what it does. Uh, it reproduces the same setup over and again. And if you decide that you decide, I need to move this fixture out of here because I need to check another part, it's simple. You have already a rail on the CMM. You pull that fixture, put another fixture on, and the only thing you got to do, call the program up on the CMM and just and there you inspect. Go. All right, interesting. Okay, well, uh, Victor Rinaldi, product design engineer with Philips Precision. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time.
Thank you. Thank you for having me there. Hey, no problem. And uh, that's it for our show uh, today. By the way, uh, be sure to follow the link uh, underneath the player page there. That'll take you to, uh, uh, Victor was just talking about um, their, their uh, off-the-shelf fixtures that snap into place. We did a great uh, demo of that uh, a few months ago, and there is a link to that, uh, that entire demo underneath the player page uh, out there for a, a product called Inspection Arsenal. So uh, go ahead and watch that, and you'll get in a, a better idea of what Victor was talking there, uh, about there for their off-the-shelf pictures. Uh, so thanks to uh, Victor and the team at Phillips Precision for uh, their help today. Appreciate that. And thanks to all of you for joining us. As usual, if there is someone you would like to see on the show or some topic you would like us to cover, just send those ideas to us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and uh, we'll do our best to cover them. Thanks for joining us today and we will see you on the next QDL. So long.